Tila Darche, girl number nine. A black, a black Kentucky girl of 14 with a tomboy demeanor. She is disheveled in appearance, yet lively in spirit. Brittany Vo, girl number seven. A black Kentucky young woman of 17. She is gentle and nurturing in her demeanor. She has a talent for storytelling. Unina Barbara Payne, mama. A black Kentucky woman in her late 30s, she is visibly with child. She has spent her entire life in the rural area. She is a talented cook, quilter, and homemaker. Landon Horton, number five. A black Kentucky man of 19. He has spent his entire life working the land and is exceptional in the fields. He has a roguish demeanor. He is a twin. Terrence McCraney. Number four, a black Kentucky man of 19. He is a mediocre worker and has talents in all things musical. He is a twin. Also Terrence McCraney, number one, a black Kentucky man of 21. He is a hard worker and has aspirations to leave his rural home. He is family centered <coughs> on and off the fields. Scene, various locations on a, farm, on a family tobacco farm in rural Kentucky. Time, late August 1967. Scene one, setting. We are in a shabby country home. The home is cramped with more people than there are places to sleep. There are three twin-size beds. At rise, it is nighttime, and girl number seven and girl number nine are curled up in bed together giggling. Most of the siblings are sharing their twin beds with two or three bodies on one bed at a time. Two of the older boys are asleep on the floor. It is well past bedtime. The room is small and swells with excitement from the girls. Girl number seven and uh, girl number seven is reading girl number nine a story from a personal notebook. <laughs> In the beginning was a word and the word was loud. <laughs> With a long A, two legs, two arms, and a small head, <laughs> some high and low points. Low like valleys and high like mountains. Oh, shh. Long as the Ohio River, more than like curvy mountains on the page. With two P's and five A's, five A's, three A's. And the word stuttered, af, and struggled, afro, afro, and stumbled, afro, latcha, and finally stuck, afro, latcha, and the word was, afro, latcha, and the word was, afro, latcha, girls, enter mama in a worn high gown and slippers. Girls, now you know you are supposed to be in bed. It was a snake, Mama. Snake? Yes, ma'am. They're on the steps and it's humongous. A humongous snake on the steps. If I have it, oh. She sees the snake. Oh, my God! Blackout. End of scene. Scene two. In the kitchen. Off the bedroom of the country home. At rise. Mama is in the kitchen the next morning. Mama is fixing something good. Multitasking on the phone, balancing cooking and talking. She is great with child, yet still multitask beautifully. Yes, Pauline, it was a snake. Who the entire lift of the steps it was? I don't know. I was a snake in anyone's home. What did I do? I called Clyde in there to kill the thing. Church meeting, all right? I will. She hangs up. Fix your mouth to tell another lie. Hey, 
don't you dare go touching anything in my kitchen. Wash your hands before you touch yes. anything in my kitchen. Ma'am. Mama looks out the window. Well, hurry up. Your daddy needs your help in the fields today. Oh, Mama, please, let's stay here and help you cook. Help me cook? Just last week you was complaining about cooking. Well, I still don't think it's fair you have to cook the meals. Every meal for all of us. And wash the dishes? Uh, see now, I was too ready to tell you. But you I'd rather it? cook and wash 20 dishes three times a day than go out in those fields. Oh, come on now. You know, look at my hands, Mama. Nothing a little crisper won't help. And look at your hands, Mama. Like I said, nothing a little crisper won't help. I don't like fields. Not the corn, wheat, not tobacco fields either. I don't know how you do it, Mama. Do what? Don't you get tired of doing all the cooking and cleaning for everybody? I don't do it for everybody. My girls help me. But don't you get tired? Mama, is this your dream when you were my age? Is this what you wanted to do with you when you grew up? Have a bunch of babies and spend all your energy feeding and cleaning them all the time? And if it was my dream, what would you have to say then? I want to know if you had any others. Well, sure. I wanted a family and a dog. Well, you do have that. I don't like gardens either. A garden is just a baby field. You have to be close to the dirt, just like farming. You sure are spending me a, spending a lot of time telling me what you don't like this morning. Little girl, what do you like? I don't know what I like or what I want to do when I grow up, but I know what I don't want to be. Is that right? Not cooking and cleaning. Guarding the laundry, washing and ironing outside or inside, it still works. I would have you know I worked hard for that garden. Just like the boys and your daddy, look what they're doing out in those fields. Everything we have or want to do, we have to work hard for. Even laundry and garden. If you ask me to choose for Chino, I'll choose laundry every time. Did you hear what I said? Everything we have, we have to work for. Yes, ma'am, I know, but... Why do you always have to clean up after them? And cook for them? And on top of that, be out in the field, same as them? Let's just not watch your mouth. If your daddy heard you talking like that. Like my mama always said, baby, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. We'll see. Mama looks out the window. Now hurry up before your daddy calls me. Yes, ma'am. She stops on her way out. One thing I don't hate is your biscuits, Mama. She stuffs one in her pocket. <laughs> is that right? Well, here, take another one for when you work up that hateful appetite of yours. Love you, Mama. I love you, baby girl. End of scene. Transition of time. Scene three. Setting. In the tobacco field at sunset. At rise. A tractor sound is heard. All the boys and girls are coming in from the field. Best part of going to the field is leaving the field. And every day it's a race. It's a race I never win. So I just sat on watching and cheering sad on. Sometime number one let me start it. He taught me how to hold my hands up and put them to my side. So I hold my hands up high over my head and pull them down real quick and fast to my side. No matter what, I always want Seb to win. She's fast, faster than all the boys. They'll never admit to it. Sometimes I mess with them and jerk a little bit before I start. <laughs> Number four gets real mad when I do that. Seb always make at me though, so I don't feel bad. Plus, we just laugh about it later. Oh, okay. Ready, set, go! And they're off to the house! First there was 10, number 10 is followed by number 1, number 8, 2, 3, and 4 are all tied to third. Seb is closing in behind in fourth place. Then there's number 5 right behind her. Number 1 passes number 10, number 2 and 3 are lagging behind, and Seb is third, and number 4, 10 and 8, sec oh! Five's coming up on number four. Who's going to make you? Who's going to win? Seb, ten, one. And the winner is number ten. He really how big that thing was. Well, I was carrying most of the weight because I had the middle. Right where the belly was. That's nothing. I had it by his head. Shoot, if I would have let go, the rest of y'all would have been screaming like little girls. No, not me. I ain't no girl. Yes, she is. You were shivering the whole time. That's because the tail kept moving, and I know if I didn't control it, I'll, it would have gotten loose and ate all y'all. Is that why you were shaking from head to toe? That's right. So, 
Really, y'all should be thanking me for saving y'all's hands. Well, thank you. Get out of here. I'm not thanking you. Like I said, I was carrying most of the weight. My eyes burn. <sighs> it's all right. Here, use this. It'll be better in a week. A week? I hate the pills. I hate them. I hate them. Shh. Yeah, me too. Daddy says I'm supposed to be on the track the next week. Next week? Are you scared? Scared ain't even the word. Yesterday when he was trying to show me how to do he drive it, he about threw me off with all its jerking. Scared me half to death. What do you want to do? I'm going to say my monthly came and I got the cramps too bad to go. What's that? The cramps? It's what you get during the lady time of the month. When it comes, Mama says you get pains. Here. And sometimes I notice she stays in bed for a while on account of her cramps. So I figured I'd just say that. And that they hurt so bad, and they last for a few days. And since Daddy can't afford to miss out on so much work, he'll just have to choose someone else as my replacement, and I'll be free. You really thought about this? Had to. How else is the girl going to get out of doing work? I don't know. Well, you better start knowing. Soon you'll be next. Me? Yeah. We all get it. Can't you see? First, the kitchen, chickens, cows, then fields, tractor. You'll be milking cows, tending to the chickens, picking rocks and shooting anything and everything country. Is picking rock better than a field? Of course not. Everything just gets worse. Oh, it can be worse. I don't want to cut it, smell it. I don't even want to look at it. It's hard and it hurts. Makes you start school later, not at all. I thought you didn't like school. I don't. But I like school better than tobacco. You'll be all right. I don't know. Sure you will. Just find something to take your mind off the work. Like what? Remember the story? She pulls the notebook from her pants. Long as the Ohio River. She grabs number nine and the dance. <laughs> Moving like curvy mountains on a page with two P's and three A's. And the word stuttered. Afro had struggled. Af Afro latch and stumbled. Afro latcha and finally stuck. Afro latcha. <laughs> they both laugh and stumble to the ground, overwhelmed with good feelings. Here, come listen. I call it raised by women. She reads in her big sister performance kind of way. <laughs> I was raised by. History making, community building, child rearing, get a whooping at one house and go home and get a whooping there too, kind of woman. Uh, let's play a game. I'll start by saying I was raised by, and you finish it. Ready? I, I, I was raised by some, some high yellow, red bone, red hair, green eyed, Cherokee knowing, cherry eating, tobacco cutting. <laughs> Nods with approval. Lincoln Institute graduating, mountain living. Or what you off the phone in a heartbeat kind of woman. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I was raised by some macaroni and cheese making, some pulp picking, pimple popping. <laughs> Three pats on the back. Watch me dancing while I'm cleaning because I invented curse words, kind of women. Oh, some Bible reading, church going, choir singing. That's just in Sunday school teaching. Sisters of the preacher sitting. Isn't it funny that they don't believe in women in the pulpit? Kind of sisters. I was raised by women. Girl number seven and girl number nine delight together in their story. You got stories, but me, I don't have talent like that. Sure you do. No, I don't know that I know of. Have you ever tried writing? No, I hate it. What don't you hate? I don't know, you know what to write. All you have to do is imagine. Imagine what? Anything. And close your eyes. Close them. Now, what do you see? Black. <laughs> Not literally. 
I see I see a woman from the city. A what? A city woman. She's tall and bigger than daddy, big like number three. And hair like number eleven. And skin like mine. And what does this fine city woman do? Did I say she was big? Way bigger than number five. And athletic and smart. She never misses school, never even seen tobacco, only mountains. Mountains? City woman was born on a mountaintop. Oh, and she saves people. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And she's a snake killer. And Chalice is where with her big knife, gun in her briefcase for killing snakes. And she's coming. Coming where? Coming here. Here? Yep. She's on her way right now. She's coming to save me from these fields. Oh, just you? What about me? You're going to leave me here? I'll ask if she can bring you to. Oh, good. Just make sure my hair is done first. <laughs> I, I think you might just have the talent. You'll be all right. You sure? We always are. Oh. Oh, Seth, come in here. Oh. I'll be right back. Oh. She places her notebook down on the ground. The stage is left empty with girl number nine. She picks up girl number seven's notebook and pen from the ground and begins to write. Dear city woman, I was raised, I was raised, I was raised working in tobacco. I was raised working on 80 acres of farmland and a family of 11, eight boys and three girls. Folks nicknamed the boys and girls based on the number they come out of mama. The oldest boy we call number one, and the youngest, number 11, and all the rest of us falling in between. And we work, all one through 11 of us. We raise chickens, pigs, cattle to sell, milking cows, and tobacco, corn, and wheat fields. She thinks. When this tobacco cutting season, girls not treated like girls. When there's leaves to hang and bodies to work, being a girl don't matter. It's like that when your son, body is just a body, don't make no difference. My daddy lets my brother share crop, tobacco, and get money from it. But us younger ones and girls don't get no money. What you writing, girl? <sighs> nothing. Don't look like nothing. What you doing with Seb's notebook? You stole it. I'm going to tell her you stole it. I did it. She let me see it. Did she really? No, she didn't. I can tell you lying. I'm going to tell her. I did it. What reason I got to believe you? Please? You don't want me to tell her. She shakes her head no. What you going to do? What you going to do to make me believe you? You going to give me a kiss, ain't you? You're gonna give me a kiss right here. Then I believe you. Girl number nine kisses him quickly. Number five gives the book back to her by pressing the book to her breast. The book slides to the ground and his hand stays pressed. Girl number nine snatches the book off the ground. Well then, <laughs> I guess I believe you. Girl number nine watches him leave, then anxiously opens the notebook back to her page. Sometimes. She thinks about writing what just happened. Sometimes. Looking at the tobacco around her. Sometimes I'm a four and nine go working on my neighbor's farm. Picking the ground leaves for tobacco. See, with tobacco, the lower leaves ripen have to be harvested first. I usually do all right because I'm younger and a little smaller. It's sometimes easier for me than the other ones because I can stay low to the ground. Put your eyes on Girl, you're screaming like you just saw a snake. I didn't take it. You left it. And I just started looking through it and writing like you said, but I didn't take it. I swear. Yeah, you're all right. You can have it. Here. To distract yourself from the work. Sandy so you sure? Sure. Oh, Sam! Come in here. I need you. Oh. Crossfade. End of scene. Scene four. It is the next day. Midday in the tobacco field. The sound of country leaves, wind swaying, and birds in the background can be heard throughout the scene. At Rice, girl number nine, is in the thick of the field. 
Girl number nine works, then distracts herself and gets caught up in trying to think out what to write next. At first, she thinks aloud. Gradually exhausted from work, she finds a spot, pulls out her notebook from her pants, and begins to write. You gotta get the ground leaves before they turn brown. Otherwise, that's money you'll lose. That's what daddy said. So I get low to the ground, and I invented this technique where I use my fingers and my teeth. And I hum a song while I'm doing it, so it feels like a game. So I hum and pick, and hum and pick, hum and pick. And I was doing all right. So one day- Girls shouldn't be dreaming in the tobacco fields. Sleeping. Don't look like that way. I'm going to tell Daddy you were sleeping in the fields. No, I wasn't. You was just lying down. Shh, ain't nobody going to believe you. Shh, you don't want me to tell him? She shakes her head, no, pleading for her book back. Girl number nine and number five freeze. You're only safe anywhere in this country. Especially not in a tobacco field. Number five come up on me, and afterwards, I was still. I lay out in the tobacco field next to the ground leaves, prick on my back and my hair. Uh! It doesn't sound as painful as it is. I lay there while my mind left my body. I lay there with my hands outreach, hoping someone would be there to help me. Uh! It doesn't sound as painful as it is. Hoping someone would place their hand in mine, pull me close. I close my eyes, thinking of city woman. She's coming to rescue me from these tobacco fields. I see my city woman, all black on, all leather gloves, that briefcase, and sunglasses. My city woman never goes to the fields at this time when she comes to save me. I reach my hand out to my city woman, who's coming to surprise me with flowers in hand. I can hear her talking love to me. Her voice is deep like water wells. I lay there, tears hard on my face, and I feel city woman's presence while I'm dry. And she's humming my song, enjoying my tears. I even feel heat next to my hand and I know it's city woman's gloves. I've never felt leather before, but I feel it now. As the heat from her hand slides in mine, I open my eyes to see City Woman. And instead, you gonna give me a kiss to make sure I don't tell, ain't you? She goes for his cheek. No, right here. He kisses her long, too long on the lips, then drops her book. Well then, <laughs> I guess I won't be telling. Simultaneously. This time. Between laps, he scolded me for laying down on the job. He laughed, and I laid there. Said he didn't know who was hired, me or the snake. Number five was laughing so hard he had to hold his stomach. And I was there, flying in the field of tobacco. I told you he was going to get in trouble next time you take the book out onto the field. You got to be smarter next time. The field ain't no place for a girl, especially not one lying down on the ground. You're all right. Just be careful. Like I said, tobacco don't care if you're a girl and hurting and terrified. Body is a body. No room for daddies or daughters in tobacco fields. Just dirt and snakes. Nothing good happens in the field except sweat and tears. I ain't staying here. I'm leaving as soon as my city woman comes. And when she do, I ain't coming back. She defiantly sits, opens the book, and continues to write, this time with more conviction. Girl number seven is hidden in her own corner of the field, revising. 
in the beginning was the word. I was raised by long ass. Some multitasking, independent thinking, cooking and cleaning, feeding the whole family and then some because and you don't take things for granted smart. kind of woman. She never asked. Some snake fighting, field surviving, tobacco pulling, achieve every dream because you'll be all right kind of woman. Three A's. Some afro lesson heart county and the word city moving and struggled memory of an elephant i'm going to write a story and stumble call you a snake and tell all the family business kind of woman and finally stop i was raised by women mama enters the stage as if looking into the fields from the front of the porch of her home with a new baby girl in hand mama Girl number seven and girl number nine are standing on three sides. Distant yet close to girl number nine, girl number nine is still and silent. Blackout. I mean, it's really believable, but you get that picture. So from watching it, you actually can see the scene and and it is very believable, um, but it does give a newfound respect for that culture that for me personally, I just wanted to dismiss because I think of that or I think of pitchforks and clan and that's what I think when I think see Appalachia. So I appreciate it. It's definitely, I'll have to look into it. You know, in the first rehearsal, we talked, we, we read it the first time. And one of the things that I asked was like, well, what are your initial response? And one of the things um, that Landon mentioned was, well, it's not, it's not surprising because of the number of children in the house. And that that concept of there being so many, so many in one, like that there was so, already so much energy going on and you got another one on the way. And so what does that mean for the attention of the parents and what their priorities are? It started to function as two things, not just a number to keep everybody, to protect my family, but also now, okay, this driving force for maybe why we get to a position where girl number nine has to kind of assert herself at the end and find a way to survive. Mm -hmm.